I'm excited. I am living in the times that Abraham longed to see. I am living in the times that David sang about as he stayed out there with his daddy's sheep plucking on that harp and making up songs along the way. I'm living in the day that the prophets have proclaimed and declared since the Old Testament, praise God. I'm living in the day that Jesus told me about. I'm living in the day when my heavenly Father is getting ready to say, Son, go get my children and bring them home. I'm excited because I'm living in that day. Now, does that mean there's no trouble? No. But praise God. Jesus has overcome my trouble. Jesus has overcome your trouble. Jesus has given us the ability not only to live in these exciting times, but also for the very sake of being able to touch Him in such a way as He touches us in a way like we ain't never been touched before. Some of y'all will get up one of these days and you'll dance all over the place. Or you'll run. Or you'll walk. Or you'll roll. Hadn't had a good holy roller in a while. First time I saw that, I was about seven years old. Scared the life out of me. Guy was standing in front of me. He was a simple-minded fellow, but he was he was lovable. You you couldn't help but love him. And the Holy Spirit hit him, and when he did, he went down like a sack of potatoes, and then he rolled. I mean, he rolled back and forth and back and forth. And I thought, what in the world? And my mama told me, she said. You've seen your first holy roller. I said, I'm just glad I wasn't in the way. Amen. It's been all right. Oh, I remember those days. I remember those days at the North Nashville Church of God on Cephas Street. What glorious times. What glorious times. But you know what? It's even better now than it was back then. And that, 60-something years ago, hallelujah to God. If you got your Bibles, I know you wouldn't dare think about coming to church without them, or at least you got an app on your phone to open it up for. Turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, starting at verse number one. I kind of I kind of danced around this last week, but I I wanna I wanna do some toe tapping here on this one today. Amen. I can't wait. Till the day comes that Satan is shut up. I, if anybody's going to wear a mask that day, God let it be him. Somebody say amen. One that keeps his jaws shut where he can't say anything. I know he's going to get bound up. We're going to read it here in just a minute with chains. Praise God. I believe I believe I could turn Aretha Franklin loose on that one and just have her singing as she looked at the devil. Chain, chain, chains, chain them fool. Hallelujah. I'll be good. Pray for me. I'm feeling better, by the way. Thank you for, oh, I know you did what you did because you felt led of the Lord. Next time, get her. Amen. Next, like in the next few minutes, will be all right. We've covered the fact that we're living in the age of grace or the church age now. This age will come to an end when the rapture of the church takes place, when every believer, Old and New Testament alike, is going to be at that moment resurrected and literally taken before the Lord. When that takes place, seven years of tribulation is going to strike this earth like we've never seen before. Somebody said, yes, sir, that will be hell on earth. No, sir, that will be God's judgment on earth. Everything that takes place involving the seals, involving the trumpets, involving the bowls that will be poured out, that is all the judgment of God. And the primary thing of the bowls is going to be upon the kingdom of the Antichrist. The seals and the trumpets will be for the sake of all of humanity that is on the planet that's left behind after the rapture. The only thing that's going to stop this It's going to be the second coming of Jesus Christ. I shared that with you last week, and I can't wait because we get to be participators. Come on. Oh, we're going to be participators in the rapture. You can mark that down. We'll be spectators of the tribulation to a degree. I don't believe the Lord's going to let that mess up our celebration of the seven-year celebration of the marriage of Christ. 
But when the second coming of Christ takes place, we're going to participate there. Anybody here ever rode a horse before? Not many of you. I got over a half of you never. Well, guess what? You get to ride a horse. Somebody said, you don't really believe that's a real horse. I really believe that's a real horse. I believe we are going to be on white stallions like our Savior who's not coming back on the foal of a donkey, but he's coming back on a white stallion which represents the overcomer, which represents the conqueror, which represents the king of all the kings and the Lord of all the lords. And honey, when we come back, he's not giving us a little saddle pony. No, 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 no. We're going to come back on white steeds with him, signifying that we have overcome. Somebody say amen. I'm getting happy. Hallelujah. I told somebody I love it when the anointing hits me because I don't feel nothing. Amen. Bring it on, Lord. Pour it on heavy duty. But then after the second coming of Jesus Christ, immediately it starts a thousand-year millennial reign upon this earth of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to share something with you. His reign does not stop in a thousand years. But he's going to prove something during that thousand years that we're going to talk about this morning. And I want you to grab a hold of it because some of y'all got questions. Some of y'all got friends and family that's got questions. You've run into total strangers who've had questions. Amen. Let's see what the Word says. Revelation chapter 20, starting at verse 1. I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon that serpent of old who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. Oh, let me read that again. Bound him for a thousand years. Hallelujah to God for that. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. Let me say that again. Amen. And shut him. Him up. I know it means he shut him up inside the bottomless pit, but I just like the fact that finally Satan's going to be shut up. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah to God. And set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones and they sat on them. Who's they? Anybody in this house know Jesus Christ? Lift your hand. If you know Jesus Christ, you're, you're they. You get to be a part of they. Amen. They sat on those thrones. Hallelujah to God. And judgment was committed to them. And then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived. I said they lived. Thank God we're going to live. I, you may think you're living now. Honey, you don't know Jack. Amen. You're going to live when you get there. And they lived, amen, and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again, not until the thousand years were finished. And this is the first resurrection. I'm going to speak more of that in just a minute. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for that thousand years. Oh, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me not to get so excited, God, that I run past stuff. Help me, God, to share everything, God, Lord, that I believe you've given to me. And I pray that in Jesus' name, God, somebody will be encouraged to get right with you. I pray that God, someone, God, will be encouraged to strengthen their ties with you. I pray that God, Lord, every single one of us in this house and even those watching by live stream, God, Lord, would be moved upon God to become more faithful to you and stay faithful to you. It was long for this day, God, that we're reading about today. Help us, God, Lord. Let the word of God go forth with great power and anointing and return, God, Lord, not void, but able, God, Lord, to do that which you've accomplished it to do. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen and amen and amen. Can you imagine Can you imagine when the heavens scroll back and Jesus Christ comes flying through there on a white horse? Hallelujah. No wings on his horse. His horses don't need wings. Amen. They don't drink Red Bull. Amen. Come on. 
I'm telling you straight up, when he comes through and then all of us gather behind him, thousands and thousands of times, ten thousands and thousands of his saints are going to come with him. And when they do, we're, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be in there. I, I want the devil to see my face. I want him to see the grin from this side to this side. I want him to see what real joy is. I want him to know, Bubba, you had your chance and you blew it. You chose yourself over him, but I've chosen him over myself. Somebody say amen. I got people keep trying to tell me, oh, you've got to be happy in this life. Well, I want to be happy in this life. I want to be as happy as anybody. But friend, let me tell you, my happiness is not nearly as important as his lordship. And if I've got his lordship in my life, I've got happiness. I've got joy. I've got peace. Hallelujah to God. I've got everything I need in Christ Jesus if I will just surrender myself to him. Oh, I'll surrender the Lord, but, no, 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 no. You need to surrender to the Lord everything and your butt. Come on. Amen. People keep trying to, my wife just gave me a look like I am so dead. Hallelujah. Just one T. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to get to the place, B-U-T. You'll get it in a minute. Amen. You, we need to get to the place, friend, where we stop trying to say, well, God, you can be Lord over me so far. God, I'll let you be Lord over so much. We need to realize, friend, he's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Somebody say amen. We've gotten to the place, friend, where we're trying to come up with some kind of a, I don't know, game show variety to serve God for. It doesn't work that way. You're either in or you're out. I'm going to say it again. You're either in or you're out. And folks, there's a lot of people claiming they're in and they don't even know where the in is. They don't know where the end door is. They don't know even how to get in. But they're happy. Oh, they're just so happy to be there. And they rejoice. And they, they do all kinds. They know all the right motions. And they do all the right hoppity hoppity and whatever else. But the truth of the matter is they don't have him as Lord. Even Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and not do the things I say to you? Oh, that's the answer a lot of people give. This millennial reign is going to be a thousand years of peace and righteousness. And honey, let me tell you something. For you go, whoo, yeah, hallelujah. Peace is one thing. Righteousness is another. The Bible is very clear that this will be a thousand years of peace and righteousness. Will it be forced to some degree on some people? Yes, because there are some people miraculously who got through the tribulation period miraculously given the opportunity to receive Christ during that thousand years. But some of them won't. And there's going to be children born during that time. And those children will be born with the sin nature within them. They still need a Savior. Honey, if you think preaching stops at the second coming of Christ, i got news for you. I'm just warming up. Hallelujah to God. I believe I get to be one of those guys that's going to preach. Praise God. I believe God's going to let me preach in the millennium in places I never dreamed possible. I never dreamed it possible that I could have gone to Cuba and preached the gospel down there. But, oh, can I tell you, it was a glorious experience. And the only thing that I wish I could have changed and made different is that I could have spoken Spanish. Yeah. Because there was a time or two I know brother. <laughs> my brother looked at me and said, say, what did you say? And we finally got to a place, I told him, I said, listen, if you don't think you can translate it the way I've preached it, tell them what you feel like God wants them to hear. And I don't know how many times, if at any, he did that, but I do know that his lovely wife, Sister Willa, she did. And she, if she didn't, she didn't quite catch what you said or she didn't know quite how to interpret it into the language of the Cubans, praise God, she preached what she wanted them to hear. You know what I found out? It worked, praise God. People came to the altar by the droves, not, not by one or two, but I'm talking about the dozens and the dozens. We filled up the place where they were literally looking through the windows, hanging in the doorways, trying to get in. They, they got so many inside to stand, but they were concerned that the officials were going to come and shut us down because we were overcompensating on the inside. I'm here to tell you, I would to God that it was that way this Sunday morning in every church across this nation. I would to God that every church was filled up to overflowing capacity. I would to God they were standing around the walls. I would to God they were coming through the doorways. I would to God we had to find more chairs. I would to God that I liked folding chairs again where we could bring those out. 
You'll get that one too in a minute. I don't like folding chairs. Only because I've been pinched a time or two. It started many a revival, but let me assure you, I want it to be the real thing and not pain. Somebody say amen. The millennial reign begins immediately following the second coming of Jesus Christ. There is no time frame of delay. There is nothing that's got to take place in this day. As soon as Christ appears in the heavens, instantly the millennial reign begins. Someone said, well, do you believe it's a literal thousand years? I believe it's a thousand years. Amen. Whether it's a thousand years to the day, to the quarter day, what I don't, I don't care. It's a thousand years. It's a thousand years of peace. It is a thousand years, praise God, of God's righteousness. It is a thousand years of, if you'll pardon the expression, heaven on earth. You know that prayer you've been praying? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God's going to answer that part of that prayer. His kingdom is coming, praise God. And when it takes place, I got news for you. In His kingdom, His will is done. It's not considered. It's not thought about. It's not voted upon. It's not changeable. God's will and God's will alone will be done. Somebody say amen. Preach on, brother. Don't believe we will. Jerusalem is going to be delivered from the attack of the Antichrist army according to chapter 19 of Revelation verses 17 through 21. The Bible is very clear that all of the, the, the nations of the world that are gathered up with the Antichrist, they're going to gather together for the purposes of coming against Jerusalem. They want to destroy Jerusalem. They don't want to save it. They, they, they don't want to hold it over for tourists. They want to destroy it. And this battle is going to start in the Valley of Megiddo. I've seen that valley. I watched as we drove through that valley, and I looked up on the top of Mount Carmel. I wish we could have gone up there. I would have loved to have gone up there and prayed for some more fire. Amen. But from Mount Carmel, you could see the Valley of Megiddo. And that valley was told by many rulers. Whoever controls that valley controls the, the very transportation of the world, controls the, 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 the commerce of the world. And that's one of the reasons they're fighting there. They want to take over the direction of the world. But I got news for you. Just when it seems like everything's going to go bad, just when it seems like nothing could get any worse, just when it seems like the trigger's about to be pulled on every gun that the Antichrist army has, praise be to God, all of the cameras that are showing this from their places up on top of the mountain range there and down in the valley itself, they're going to swing eastward. And when they do so, Jesus Christ is coming through, like I said a while ago. They're going to show him him coming through. They're not know, going to know what to do, but they don't even know how to respond to that because this is not supposed to happen. Satan said this wouldn't happen. The Antichrist said this wouldn't happen. The false prophet said this wouldn't happen. I got news for you. I don't care. Let every critic say what they want to. The day is coming when Jesus Christ is coming through the eastern sky. He's coming back in victory. He's coming back overcoming. He is coming back with all power, all glory. Hallelujah to God. And people around the world are going to see it when it happens. Bless you, Jesus. Oh, I'm getting Pentecostal up here. Satan is going to immediately be bound in chains by an everyday, ordinary, common angel. Not an archangel. Not a super-duper, whooper whopper angel. Just an angel. Now, in my mind, I visualize, you know, that little half-naked, chubby, little wings on the back, you know, with a bow and arrow. But I'm pretty sure that's not that what this angel's going to look like. But this angel's going to come down, and he's going to literally, you know, being a fan of old wild westerns, I can almost see him whooping out that whip of chain. <laughs> okay. Oh, won't it be wonderful just to watch Satan struggle want to be wonderful to see the fear upon his face want to be glorious to finally have him realize praise after all the hell he's put you and me through he's going to get his in spades somebody say amen that angel just as soon as that chain is a is completely connected and not able to be broken by the devil going to walk over to the place where the bottomless pit is at 
going to whoop out a key. But going to put it in the lock, turn it, open the lock, take the lock off, pull open the hatch and go, come here. Some of you gamers will get this. Come over here. You know, remember that? Okay, never mind. He's going to take him and he's going to throw him down the shaft of the bottomless pit. He's going to close the lid, put the lock back on it, praise God, and Satan is going to tumble. Amen. For almost a thousand years, he's going to tumble, always expecting the, you know, to come, but it never shows. There's nothing worse than to expect a splat, but no splat. Amen. Even Wiley e. Coyote got his, but friend Satan is just going to plummet and plummet, and fear is going to grip him, and, and anguish and anxiety is going to get him. There'll be no sleeping for 999 plus years. He's not going to be able to be resting. He's not going to be able to take a break. He doesn't get a coffee break. He doesn't get a food break. Praise God. He's going to plummet for 999, and I believe nine months. Amen. 999 years and nine months. He's going to plummet, 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 plummet. And there will be peace on this planet. Two reasons. Most importantly, because the Prince of Peace has come down and is in control. Secondly, the one who has kept everything stirred up, messed up, tore up, is plummeting. And he cannot do a thing. He cannot speak about it. He cannot stop it verbally. He cannot stop it physically. He can't stick his claws out and grab a hold of the side of the wall. He can't even find the side of the walls. You're not hearing me. I'm telling you, there's peace coming. There's peace coming. Finally, peace coming. I wake up in the middle of the night after having a, 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 some kind of a nightmare and, and I'm unsettled and, and my heart's pounding and I'm breathing heavily and, and I, you know, it's messing up my score on my, on my sleep number bed. Three o'clock this morning, I was in so much pain. There was no place on the bed that I could turn, that I could get on this side, that side, or any other side. I was in pain. And I got up because I didn't want to keep my wife awake. And I went in there, and I tried my best, and I sat in the recliner. I don't know why we think sitting in the recliner is going to be so much more comfortable. I know we fool ourselves. I put a pillow back behind me. Actually, it's a neck brace that I have. I put it behind me right up against that area, and I laid till I finally got to a place where there was no pain. And then I prayed, God, please, just let me go back to sleep. I don't know what time I went to sleep, but I do know my alarm clock went off at 6.30 this morning and scared me awake. I thought I was in bed. I started reaching back behind me where I normally keep my, my phone, my, my alarm clock. Instead, I had to reach over and find it there. I came to once last night, just as I was getting to sleep, your iPad went off and lit the room up, but I thought there was an angel had stepped in. But I can tell you when Satan is finally bound and thrown in, there will be peace. Peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Somebody say amen. I'm here to tell you plain and simple that Satan will be cast in there and he's going to plummet and plummet and plummet and plummet. Well, why? Why do we need a millennial reign? Why do we need this thousand years? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but I'm going to give you seven, uh, about seven or eight of the, the best ones here, if I may. First of all, you need to know he's going to deal with the rebellion or the rebellious enemies of God himself. Christ is going to be the one who deals with these people who have rebelled against. All these people who proclaim that Jehovah is not God, they're going to find out otherwise. I, I don't believe Jehovah is God because I'm a Christian. I believe that God, Jehovah, is God simply because he's proven himself again and again. It's not about me just reading the Bible. It's about the fact that he's proven himself again. There are so many things I could prove to you that God doesn't exist. Silence gripped the crowd. I could prove to you that if I wanted to, that this was all just a big sham. Two words, but God. All of a sudden, there are things that transpire in my life and in your life that cannot be explained as coincidence, cannot be explained as just, you know, some random miracle. Friend of me, God has stepped in. God has moved. God has done something that no one else could do. Some of you are here today because of the very wonderful work of God in your life. He's created a miracle where you needed one and didn't know how to get one. They're not on sale at Kmart or Walmart or anybody else's mart. You need to understand Ollie's can 
cannot get them at a discount for you. Miracles are coming from God and it's happening on a regular basis around here. I'm not talking about it on the other side of the world. I'm telling you, we've had miracles in this church. People in this church have received miracles. God has moved upon them miraculously for a healing. He's moved upon them miraculously for, for deliverance. He's moved upon them saving people that we didn't think could get saved. I just love people who don't understand what God can do. I bet you I can find some folks that don't hardly believe that God saved me, but I'm so glad he did. And I'm so glad he didn't listen to them. Somebody shout amen. I got people try to tell you, oh, there ain't nothing different about him. Oh, yeah, there is. The guy that they're talking about died at Calvary. That guy got buried under the blood. That guy got washed away. Amen. But the guy that stands before you now has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. My name's been written in the book of life. I'm here to tell you I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm not going to go alone. and going to take anybody and everybody that I can. Why? Because that's what we're supposed to do. Preach on, Brother Nolan. I believe I will. Another reason he's coming back is he's going to fulfill the covenants that he made to the patriarchs. Now listen to me. We as mankind may break the covenants we make with God, but God will never break his side of the covenant. You mark it down. Be unfaithful if you will. But I thank God that my God is faithful and beyond faithful. Somebody say amen. He cannot deny himself. It's his nature to be faithful. I'm here to tell you, thanks be to God, he is not going to let that be done. He's going to third of all deliver and restore Israel to its proper place. Ever since God called Abraham, or Abram as he was known then, God added the ham afterwards. You'll get it. Amen. You need to understand that God made a covenant with Abraham. He said, if you'll leave your father's house, if you'll get out from under the tutelage of your father, if you'll get out of this idol-making bunch, if you'll get away from this land and go where I show you, I'll make a great people from you. Now listen to me. Hebrews did not exist before Abraham. You catching this? There wasn't a group of people called Hebrews before. These are the people of Ur. You are. What a what a great name. Where are you from? You're you're what? You know. And he said to him, when you do this, you're going to have children. You're not going to have a couple of kids. You're going to have children. How many children am I going to have, Lord? Can you count the sand that is up under your feet right now? No. Well, that's how many kids you're going to have. Can you count the stars up in the sky? Some of us think we can. That's only because we keep trying to look at the sky through all of the artificial light that's around us. I got news for you. Get out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and have the power go out. I didn't know that was all up there. The one time I had a chance to see at that point in time, the one chance I had to see the Milky Way, I couldn't see it. We had clouds. But where there weren't clouds were so many stars, and I thought, well, where did those all come from? Where did they? They've always been there. I've been blinded by artificial. Mm. There's too many people being blinded by artificial. It's time. If you want to see the light, you're going to have to get where all you can see is the light. Shout with me any time now. Too many people trying to get close to God, but they keep allowing artificial light to get in the way. Oh, you better pray hard. I feel a mean streak. My God, y'all pray so hard the pain's gone and there's a mean streak in its place. I'm here to tell you straight up, friend, we've gotten to the place where we've allowed all kinds of artificial light instead of the light, the light of the gospel, the light of God, the light. He is the light. God is light. I mean, we've allowed that light to become literally invisible to us because of all the other light. Sometimes when I'm trying to see something from the ceiling, I'll do this to block that light so I can get a better look. Without it, I'm blinded. I'm blinded by by that glow, and so I have to do what I can. Friend, let me tell you, if you're going to get closer to God, some of y'all are going to have to. Hello. I got my favorite preachers just like you got your favorite preachers, but can I tell you what? I'll take this book over those favorite preachers any day of the week. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll tell you right now, but you ain't going to tell me nothing. I ain't going to hear it. 
This book is all that matters. And it's not up to some preacher to tell me what it's all about. It's up to me to open the book up, stick my nose in it, and begin to read and understand. My Lord, we live in a day and time where we've got so many footnotes, we've got so much commentary, we've got so many things to help us to understand. There's no excuse for not knowing the Word of God. I better hush, keep moving. He's going to anoint and reward the saints as kings and priests. This is His promise to all believers He's going to unify all things in Christ according to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22. He is literally going to righteously judge the nations to return lands to their rightful owners. I don't care if you have got a deed to it. Trust me. Right now in Hawaii, they're about to go through a major, major problem. There's a lot of people who don't have the deeds to the property that got consumed by the fire. And all of a sudden, be assured, honey, Mr. Government's going to step in to work things out. Yeah. I don't know all that took place there. I know it's terrible. It's tragic. I, I'm deeply concerned that the thing that's really needed is not being done. The thing that should be considered is not being taken care of. And I don't need Oprah or The Rock or anybody else to waltz in there and be the savior of Lahaina. I need them to shut up. If they're going to give, give and just shut up. Amen. Write the check. Amen. Whoop out the black card. But whatever you do, I, I'm talking about the black credit card, okay? So don't think I'm going racist on you here. Just, just pull it out and, and charge it. But stop trying to take it over and stop trying to have your way be done and your will be done. Oprah sat in the church, heard a preacher preach the word of God, how that God was a jealous God. And Oprah, in all of her glorious Wisdom said, well, what's God got to be jealous about? And so instead she went and found this lunatic who taught her that she is God. And now her and Shirley McLean are apparently standing on beaches going, I am God. Shirley McLean ain't my God. Oprah Winfrey ain't my God. The rock is built well, but he ain't my God. Somebody shout amen any time now. You need to understand plain and simple. My God, I found in the pages of this blessed book, this book is revealing my God to me. This book is showing me my God, showing me his character, showing me his nature, showing me his love, showing me his mercy, showing me his grace. It's showing me God on a scale that no human being can ever do in this life. Preach, Brother Nolan, I believe I have been. Glory. He is going to govern and restore the earth to God's original design before the fall of man. God has always had a plan. Did it ever occur to you that it never occurred to God? We had like, God didn't see that coming. Honey, he saw it long before you were even considered. I, will, I stand amazed at people who think they can catch God off guard. Make a wrong decision, God was prepared for that in advance. Make a right decision, God's prepared for that too. You see, God's prepared to deal with you however you're going to lean, however you're going to go. It doesn't mean he wants you to necessarily go this way or that way. What it means is God knows it all. God is a know-it-all. Come on. He is omniscient. He knows everything. He is omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. And we can't handle that because we are confined to our little, what is it, two square feet, four square feet, whatever it is that we have in our personal space. Let me tell you something. Everywhere is God's personal space. I can't go anywhere. I can take up the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the sea. He's there, been there, done that in Hawaii. I absolutely can make my bed in hell. Guess what? God's there. Got his hand on me. You hear what I'm saying? Friend, let me tell you, you can go through the best of times or the worst of times, but God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you every step of the way, whatever you're going through. <laughs> Glory to God. His kingdom is going to be a literal earthly kingdom. The first thousand years is just the beginning. That's why the songwriter said, When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've not one less.
best day to sing God's praise than when we first begun. I'm so glad that on a Wednesday night back in 1967, a little boy went down to the altar while everybody was falling asleep with their heads bowed because they were plumb wore out. This little fellow was asking Jesus Christ into his heart. And I told God, I don't understand everything the man said, but I believe what he said is true. And I believe that, Lord, you can save me. I know I ain't much, and I know I probably messed up a time or two with mom and daddy, but, Lord, if you can, save me. When I came to myself, praise God, I was flat of my back. One of my little camper buddies said he was flopping like a fish and flapping like a bird. The power of God so strong upon me that when I went to go get my favorite drink, my favorite drink at youth camp, a suicide. I don't know who invented that, but there was a wrong place to invent that. Amen. You know what a suicide is, right? It's a little bit of every Coca-Cola you got on tap. What did it taste like? Suicide. But we loved them. And I slapped my quarter down. And when I reached down with my hand, still being overwhelmed by the power of God, I began to squeeze suicide. I like that. Let me say that again. I said, filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, I reached out and I began to squeeze suicide. Suicide was not going to have any part of me. And my little buddy who saw me flopping like a fish, flapping like a bird, said, here, I'll help you. And he takes my drink and goes, gee, thanks. And my mama let me get another one. She had another quarter. She was the camp nurse. Now I'm telling you, in 1974, when I, Went there to camp, not to camp, uh, but camp meeting. I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The building's gone now. In my mind, I can still see the place just, just over here, just off to the center on, on what you would say is the right side. I said it was the right side too. And there God gloriously filled me with the Holy Ghost in fire. Went down to Shoney's that night, made our way in, was able to get in and get a table. The young lady said to me, what would you like to drink? And I said something in tongues. And she said, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. And I tried again in nothing but tongues. You ever been there? Some of y'all need a good dose of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. Amen. Walking around like you got it all together. Let me tell you, you ain't got nothing together until the Holy Ghost is living on the inside of you. And he couldn't live on the inside of me until I gave my heart and life to Jesus. And I'm telling you, I tried again. My mother said, I believe he'll have a Coke. I Nodded at my head. That was the only thing I could do that wasn't in tongues. But it started something. Amen. There were other people from the Church of God camp meeting. They also started, they, they were in agreement with me. Amen. And then she asked me, what do you want to eat? Oh, here we go again. And I came out in tongues again. And a woman looked at me like, I, is he from here? What, what is this? My mother said, we've just come from the Church of God camp meeting. My son just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight. He's speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives him the utterance. She's like, all right. <laughs> she didn't have a clue. The world doesn't understand this. The world can't grasp this. They can't figure it out. Thank God. I don't want some, some psychotic, psychedelic, psychologist, psychiatrist to try to figure it out. I like what we said one night on Wednesday night. It's better felt than telt. Somebody say amen. I can't tell it to you. All I can tell you is how it was for me. I had peace like a river. I had joy overflowing. I'm telling you, friend, there was nothing wrong in the world that night for me nor the days after that. I want to tell you it's real. It's real. It's real. And one day it's going to be real for all eternity. Somebody say amen. The government of this kingdom is going to be theocratic in form. God is going to reign through Christ. He's going to reign through all the saints. And immediate judgment will be put upon violators of God's law. The Bible says that Christ is going to rule with a rod of iron. See, we are all ready for peace, but righteousness scares us. Real righteousness demands righteous living. And there are going to be people in that kingdom who are not sold out from their heart. And there will be violators and violations. Is he going to kill them? I don't think so. But he is going to require penance. 
He is going to require them to pay for their violation. I'm going to leave that up to him. And guess what? That's how we will rule and reign with him. I'm here to tell you straight up, we need to understand some things. We've got some judges in our judicial system around this nation, around the world for that fact, who let anything go, who fall for every little story they're told. And then there are some judges that are extreme opposite, and they are hard and burdensome. You know what we need? We need some good judges who can judge rightly. And the greatest judge I know that judges rightly and none other than God himself. He is the righteous and true judge. Somebody say amen. Got to hurry. I got to hurry. My goodness gracious, I wish you all slow that clock down. Hey, turn it back like we had the other one turned back. Went in there this morning to check on the baptistry. It said it was 3.30 in the afternoon. I thought, I don't think so. Not yet. Jerusalem is going to become the capital and worship center of the world. Natural people who survive the tribulation will live long lives again. People are going to live to be 900 plus years in that kingdom. Listen to me. They're going to be able to live for eternity if they don't rebel against God and align themselves with the devil at the end of the millennial reign. David Jeremiah teaches, and I love David Jeremiah. I don't know that I agree with him 100%, and that's my prerogative because of scriptures that I've read and when he makes statements, I look for the scriptures that he uses to make those. But David teaches that all who go into the millennium will be righteous. I don't believe that. I believe there will be some people who miraculously get through. That's called the grace of God still. That's called the mercy that endures forever. I don't understand everything that God does, God says, God is. By faith I accept it. By faith. Even if it goes against what I think, I submit to him. Why? He's God. Hello? He's God. Who in the world wants to argue with God? Do you think you're going to win the argument? No. Do you think you stand a chance? Now, let me tell you something. You can speak to God. You can speak to God in, in what some people would say are angry ways. And God will relent, but God will never repent. God may stay the hand of execution for now, but if it doesn't change, it will follow through. When Jonah went to Nineveh and came in there and said, Hey, 30 days, judgment's coming. While the king called out for everybody, everybody in the kingdom of Nineveh to come before God in sackcloth and ashes and repent, including their service animals. Amen. Went up to their oxen, went up to their camels, went up to their horses and their mules and so on. Can't you see Henrietta the chicken walking around with sackcloth and ashes up on her? Oh, what's going on? But the king was taking no chances whatsoever. He wanted God to know, we hear you. We obey you. We are going to do what you require of us. Let me tell you, three generations later, 120 years later, that which had been proclaimed to happen in Nineveh happened in Nineveh. You want to know why? Because the children, the grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren of the people who saw and heard Jonah Turn their back on God. Friend, it don't take forever for that to happen. Our nation has seen itself turn from God. We even do it on our money now. We've got, we've got George used to face the, the statement that on our money it says, In God we trust. He used to face that, indicating that we did trust God. Now George has turned his back on In God we trust. And isn't it a sure, a sure thing to be able to say that about our government? And whether it's at the federal level, the state level, the county level, the city level, whatever level, I'm here to say they've turned their back up on God and any government that does so is doomed now brother Nolan you lost half of us I know universal peace and satisfaction 
is going to be known throughout the kingdom. The Bible says in Isaiah 2 and 4, they're going to take their swords and their spears and going to beat them into plows and, and pruning uh, uh, blades and so on, and we will know war no more. Somebody say amen. Isaiah 65 and 20 tells us that no longer will babies die after a few days. No longer will old men die before the fulfillment of their days. Everybody's going to live long and prosper. Hallelujah to God. I'm here to tell you straight up, you need to know and understand, a hundred year old man will look like a kid. Saw this commercial, Yes, was it yesterday I think? A woman said, I'm 87 years old and I feel much younger and I said, you don't look it. She looked like she'd been through 87 years. My daddy will tell you, he's getting ready to turn 88 here in a couple of weeks. I'm here to tell you straight up. I asked him, I said, Daddy, how does it feel? He said, like it did the year before. He said, he said the one thing that got me, I said, what's that, Daddy? He said, how quick it happened. Eighty-something years on the planet, how quick it happened. Maybe the scripture is true after all. What is our life but a wisp of smoke? The increase in natural light is going to cause crops to grow at increased rates and healing abilities are also going to increase. We're going to literally use the, the leaves from the tree, amen, of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, 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 yeah, that one. We're going to use those leaves and we're going to use them for the healing of the nations. I can't imagine what it's like to go over, pluck a leaf off and go, oh yeah, that's better. Most of the time I'm worried about what I'm getting around on a tree, whether or not it's going to make me scratch and itch and come up with blisters all over creation. Amen. Or whether I get into a nest of chiggers or, or whether, like my cousin did the other day, just out minding his own business, bush hogging his neighbor's field, and he ran across a, a yellow jacket nest that was in the ground, and he didn't know it. He found out. He said, I can assure you there is a gallon or two of diesel that is coming their way. I'll leave that between him and them. I'm going to stay out of it. He's in Oklahoma and I'm here. Glorified saints will not be able to be touched by the devil. Temptation will have no power. Can I tell you, temptation is not as powerful as we think it is, but we give it power. And we allow, because we don't understand the scripture says that there's no temptation has ever come upon us that is not common to us. In other words, what you're tempted with is something that you should be able to deal with. But we give in to it. Well, we won't give in to it then. Temptation will not have its way. We will be untouchable by the devil. I'm here to tell you, Satan is going to be loosed. I believe, I truly believe it will be a little season. I'm going to take that literally for about three months. In three months' time, he's going to take the people who don't like Jesus being Lord, who don't like him being king, who don't like us being king with him. They, they don't like that, and so they're going to, Take up with this one who's going to reveal himself as an angel of light and lead them against the very throne of God himself. And when that happens, the Bible says that God is going to literally spew forth a fire that will consume them on the spot and is going to literally not annihilate this planet, but is going to renovate this planet. He is going to burn anything and everything that even could have been used wrongly by the enemy. And when he gets through, don't worry, we'll get into this next week. I saw a new heaven and I saw a new earth because the former were gone, passed away, renovated. This millennial reign is something, as I've said, we've been longing for, desiring for the longest time. You want to go in the first resurrection, not the second. The first resurrection is for all righteous men and women, boys and girls. Second resurrection, though, is the one that's done prior to the white throne judgment. And those people that are resurrected are going to be judged. They are going to be judged. We will have received rewards to a degree. I believe we will receive other rewards accordingly. But the Bible is clear to us that we absolutely, positively can't do much about the first death unless we get raptured. First death is when we die, a, quote unquote, a natural death or a, our life ceases in this world. 
But the second death, that death is eternal. That's when the souls of the unrighteous are cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Gehenna is the, he- the Greek word for that. Gehenna is eternal hell. There isn't no, you know, you're there for a few years and then you're gone. There, there's none of that at all whatsoever. When you go to Gehenna, you're there. The Bible tells me the very first two people that are going to go there is going to be the Antichrist and the false prophet. Third one that's going to be there is Satan himself. But honey, let me tell you, those are three characters I don't want to be anywhere near in any way, form, or fashion. Give me Jesus. Come on, give me Jesus. I don't want the guy that's in Serbia claiming that he's Jesus. Uh, You heard about this guy? Guy in Serbia. He's in jail right now. He's been in jail since 2020. They took him in because of things that were going on and the things that they were doing in his little commune. He declares he is the Christ of the second advent, the second coming. There's a Korean that said the same thing over in Korea of all places since he was Korean. Claimed he was the Christ of the second coming. But Reverend Moon just didn't have it. The wacko in Waco, he proclaimed a time or two that he was the Christ of the second coming. And there are going to be many, many others. And Jesus warned us of those people. There will be many that come in my name trying to proclaim that they are me. Don't believe it. Don't run to the deserts after them. Don't run to the mountains after them. Don't go to these places after them. Why? You'll know when he gets here. I said, you'll know when he gets here. They won't have to go, hey, did you hear? Jesus is in Panama City Beach, Florida. I like Panama City Beach, but he ain't coming there. Amen. Did you hear? Jesus is in Norway. I like a Norway, but it's not coming there. He's not coming to Japan. He's not coming to America. Sorry. He's not coming to South America. He's coming back, first of all, in clouds of glory. And then when he comes back seven years later, he's going to come right over Jerusalem and put his big old number 12 on top of Mount Olives. And honey, if you don't know him by then, you better be really praying. You have an opportunity now. I'm closing. You have an opportunity. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, I want to ask you why. What are you holding back for? What are you waiting on? Why? Well, Pastor, I don't want to have to be like you. You don't have to be like me. You want to rejoice you don't have to be like me. Jesus saves everybody that wants to be saved. He saves everyone who humbles their heart to him. I'm just an A-plus personality. I know it's hard to imagine. I'm so quiet and reserved. You don't have to be like me. You can be quiet and reserved too, but you still need Jesus. You can't point to grandparents and you can't point to great-grandparents. You can't point to any family line or family ancestry. You can't point to those things. It's not about your money. You ain't got enough. You ain't never going to have enough. If everybody gave you their worth right now, you still wouldn't have enough. Because, folks, salvation is free. And I just want to ask you, if you're not ready, I'm I'm begging you from the bottom of my heart, please, please take the opportunity you're about to get right now. Father, in Christ's name, the millennial reign is real. The second coming of Jesus is real. Tribulation, it's real, Lord. The rapture is real. The life we're living right now, it's real. God, we need you like we've never needed you before. I'm simply asking you, I'm looking to you right now, God, to touch in this house. I know some of this stuff seems so far-fetched and far out and so far away, but I believe it's even at the door. And I'm asking you, please, God, through your Holy Spirit, touch hearts that are here today, hearts that are watching by live stream. And I pray, God, that in Christ's name, You would draw them to you as only you can. I can make people laugh, God, and I can make people cry. 
I can do a lot of things emotionally, but God, the truth of the matter is I can't save a single solitary person. There isn't a preacher on this planet that can do that. But Jesus, you can save. You can save them to the uttermost, God. Whoever they are, no matter what they've done, God, you're willing to forgive them and cleanse them and wash them clean. Grant that they would hear you right now. Grant that they would sense your presence, that they would feel your conviction in their hearts and their lives. With every head bowed and every eye closed, listen to me. It doesn't mean a thing for me to see your hand if God doesn't see your heart. And let me tell you, God sees your heart, whether you ever open it up to Him or not. He sees your heart. Hey, He knows whether or not you're ready or not. He knows whether or not you're even open to receiving Him. But I'm asking you. I believe He's here. I believe the Holy Spirit is here. And I believe He's touching people's hearts and souls right now. And I'm asking you in the name of Jesus Christ, if you don't know Him, please, please, please do not let this day go by without reaching out to Him. Lord, here am I. Save me. Lord, here am I. Redeem me.